Hi, in this video, let's discuss about a very common condition of the gastrointestinal system that is cirrhosis of liver. Cirrhosis is a chronic progressive disease of the liver characterized by extensive degeneration of the liver parenchymal cells. If you look at the classification or the etiological factors, the first one is the Lennox cirrhosis or alcoholic cirrhosis, which occurs in 30% to 50% of patients. It is also called portal or nutritional cirrhosis and is usually associated with alcohol abuse. The first change in the liver from excessive alcohol intake is an accumulation of fat in the liver cells. Uncomplicated fatty changes in the liver are potentially reversible if the person stops drinking alcohol. If the alcohol abuse continues, widespread scar formation continues. The next type is the post-necrotic cirrhosis, which is a complication of viral, toxic or idiopathic or autoimmune hepatitis. Broad bands of scar tissue form within the liver. It occurs in about 10 to 15 percent of cases. Biliary cirrhosis is associated with chronic biliary obstruction and infection. It occurs in 15 to 20 percent of patients. Cardiac cirrhosis results from long-standing severe right-sided heart failure in patients with core pulmonal, constrictive pericarditis and tricuspid insufficiency. The other causes could be that of Bud Chiari syndrome, which is an uncommon disorder characterized by obstruction of hepatic venous flow. And also cirrhosis can be caused by disorders that affect the body's ability to handle iron and copper metabolism, as it is seen in cases of hemochromatosis and Wilson's disease. Let's look at the pathophysiological map. There is first the liver inflammation, further causing liver necrosis and liver fibrosis and scarring. Liver inflammation could lead to pain, fever, nausea, vomiting, anorexia and fatigue. The necrosis causes decrease in the bilirubin metabolism, hyperbilirubinemia, jaundice, decreased bile in the gastrointestinal tract, light colored stools, decreased vitamin K absorption, bleeding tendency, increased urobilinogen and which causes dark urine. There is decrease in the metabolism of proteins, carbohydrates and fats, hypoglycemia, decreased plasma proteins, ascites and edema, which could lead to various clinical manifestations, uh, which we'll discuss in the next slide. Further, it could lead to liver failure, hepatic encephalopathy, hepatic coma, and finally, if everything remains untreated, death also could, can be caused due to the complications. Like further, uh, it could lead to a portal hypertension, ascites, edema, splenomegaly, anemia, thrombocytopenia, leukopenia, esophageal and gastric varices, hemorrhoids, superficial abdominal veins, which are otherwise termed as caput medusae. There is an increase in the alkaline phosphatase level, increase in the bilirubin, prothrombin time, and decrease in the albumin. All the pathophysiological changes could lead to the following systemic clinical manifestations. The neurological clinical manifestations are hepatic encephalopathy, peripheral neuropathy, asterixis. The gastrointestinal symptoms are anorexia, dyspepsia, nausea, vomiting, change in bubble habits, dull abdominal pain, fetal hepaticus, esophageal and gastric varices, hematemesis, hemorrhoidal varices, congestive gastritis. The reproductive symptoms in the females are that of amenorrhea and in males, it's testicular atrophy, gynecomastia and importance. Integumentary symptoms are jaundice, spider angioma, palmar erythema, purpura, petechiae, caput medusae. The hematological symptoms are that of anemia, thrombocytopenia, leukopenia, coagulation disorders, 
and splenomegaly. And the metabolical changes will be seen in terms of potassium deficiency. There will be hyponatremia and hypoalbuminemia. The cardiovascular symptoms are fluid retention, peripheral edema, and ascites. In my next video, I'll brief you all about the medical and the nursing management. So thank you.